<laughs> Ooh, we made it back. All right. You get old every time I see your face, just poof. It's time. Pops up. <laughs> okay, we're down to two more today, but right, we still have tomorrow as well, Monday, and also Tuesday. I had to just, in my brain, had to think today was still Sunday. So uh, we're excited for our next set of people that we have coming in. This, is, again, it's going to be a lot of fun. They're putting up the schedule too for you guys what's going on tomorrow so uh this is going to be a fun one all right so uh i'm telling you if you guys have never seen what id software has been doing over the years and especially for the last set of games you're going to really enjoy this uh and you're going to be blown away of what they've been doing so enough said by me let's bring in the team from id software Hey! Hey guys! Hey, what's up? Hey there. How's it hey. going, guys? Team Mid. Good. This one's nice and unique too because uh, you guys are all different parts of the world, right? Jason's in Texas. Yeah, we're everywhere. Yeah, Peter, you're in the UK, right? No, Germany. Germany. That's yeah. right. And Denzel, you're in Australia or New Zealand? Australia. Got that right. Australia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're all over the place, and then I'm LA, and then Ashley's in Canada. Um, we're all over the place right? worldwide yeah this should be a lot of fun too so thank you guys for taking your sundays denzel your monday and then yep. peter late from the night you. denzel's from the future yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. good to see and we're still Peter's standing late at night his time right now too mm -hmm. so thank you yeah. for doing this taking some time out of your days to participate and be part of the zebra summit this year i really appreciate it yeah, so, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, it's weird that we're virtual. Hopefully, again, we get to do this in person again. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an honor to be here for sure. Uh, well, I'm excited to have you guys here. So I want to hand it off to you guys so you guys can start because I know you got a lot of stuff that you want to share. Um, this, But we got an hour and a half with you guys today. So this should be a lot of fun. Again, we will be monitoring as much as we can the chat for you guys, throwing at you whatever we can, myself and Ashley. We'll throw out questions and stuff that are coming from the audience to you guys wherever we can. So, but also audience, please keep in mind, we're not gonna be able to throw everything at them because they have some set, <laughs> things. They have some set things they wanna share with you all, right? So we're gonna hand it to Jason, correct? To uh, start us off here, right? Yeah, sounds good. All right. So here we go. All right. Uh, you want to share your screen? Do you need to share your screen? Jason? Oh, yeah, I do need to do it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that might help. It's a delay. And this is just the anticipation now. That's all this is. Yeah. You gotta it's getting people like, anticipated. Like Paul said, buckle up. Yeah. Buckle, <laughs> Bu buckle up, cupcake. Are we... Uh, <laughs> there you am go. Am I sharing? We good? Yep. Okay, hold on. There you go. And nice. let me get my... Let me get my screen up. Sorry. No worries. We good? Here we go. All there right. Go. Anyways, uh, welcome to Character Art of Doom. Uh, I want to kick this off with kind of stepping through some process um, and then hand it off to Denzel and then Peter will do some demo stuff. Um, I have ZBrush open. I'm not going to do any sculpting stuff, but I, I want to take some time and just step through the process and how we convert it completely to a ZBrush pipeline for modeling through Eternal and um, and just uh, how we did it and, and, and all the stuff we learned along the way. So first things uh, first, uh, when it used to character team, obviously I'm Jason Martin, the character art director, uh, Denzel and Peter are here with us today. They'll be dem demoing uh, back home and abroad. Uh, we have Philip, Solomon, Angel, and Field. Uh, it takes a mountain of people to make video games and we couldn't do it without all these guys. So I want to give a shout out to everybody. Thank you. Um, and hold on one second. Uh, so I want to talk about some challenges that we had to overcome during the production of Doom Eternal. Every time you start a game, there's challenges. Uh, you want to see where you can dip and tuck and, and get game speed along the way of the pipeline and still make great art. So it's important for us to increase fidelity, increase speed, mostly in hard surface. Uh, we can Organic stuff is organic. It's a little bit more friendly, but I mean, it's a different beast, not easier, just different. Um, so basically hard surface, we want to put as much detailing and stuff as we can in our hard surface. And, and still not blow up our, our production because hard surface takes a little bit of time. And in the same uh, aspect, we want to simplify our pipeline. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, next slide. Whoop, 
Yep. So the super approach to solve these problems. More fidelity with hard surface modeling. We get to stay in one package. Uh, multiple methods to approach the problem. Um, that's the great thing about ZBrush. It's not just like poly modeling or whatnot. There's you can sculpt poly. It's with just different ways of skin attack, skin a cat. Um, so uh, it's a lot of freedom and a lot of art artistic creativity. Uh, in my opinion, complexity slows down creativity. So uh, uh, ZBrush is really free in that matter. We can just try a lot of things quickly, erase it, go back, um, as opposed to um, you know, some of the traditional poly modeling methods that would uh, take some time and were harder to make changes. So there's three types of modeling techniques. Uh, one can argue that in ZBrush is how you model anything. But I want to step through this process real quickly to kind of show you how, like these are three ways we can attack, um, uh, uh, approach modeling a character. So um, personally, my favorite is the Z model base method. Now, I realize, I'm going to call this out, in between these little arrows here, there is a, a lot of information that happens, but I wanted to simplify it or else you'd be bored with a lot of like bullet points underneath each thing. It just wouldn't make sense. So I might call it the most important ones. So the first approach is the Z model base, and that is just a crude uh, low cage model uh, block out of the character or pieces of the character. And then we'll use the crease method uh, and um, not by hand, we'll do the auto crease. I think we usually use it uh, real quick. Let me call that out. I think down here in geometry, we'll use crease at 35, like two. This will get you probably 80% of what you need for the holding edges. Um, it's not always perfect, but I don't ever do this by hand. Why, why would you? I'd rather do that and then delete or erase a few or add a few to, along the way. Um, so they'll increase it. And then obviously the subdivision dynamic subdiv, uh, it also is light and it's really like fast. Um, so once we, once I have that all down, it'll be a nice clean model. Then it'll give me a freedom to sculpt in like all my third lead details and such. Um, you can use any method across. I mean, there's a million ways you can do that. And I'll talk about that briefly in a minute, but the Z model base is a huge win. Um, you just, it's basically, you, you know, you can get these nice clean shapes. Um, at, a, at, at a very low cage, and then you can manipulate it along the way. And then the creases are great. You can set that. Um, now, granted, when I, I usually set 35 to 2, and that's a general crease across the board. Um, there's not much. And, and sometimes you might want a tighter crease here, a tighter crease there. What I'll usually do for that is instead of adding, changing my crease value, I'll add in a tighter edge loop or something so it's a little sharper here. But I generally like the look of 35 uh, to, well, 2 really to crease how it subdivides across the whole surface. Um, and then, uh, like I said, you can use any meth past the sub D commit. You can use anything in the book, bullions, uh, brushes all day long. And a lot of times, um, in the early stages of this, and I still do do it. One thing we do is, uh, after sub D before you want to sculpt the third read details, um, you, uh, uh, save a morph target and use a morph brush to erase it. It's real free because you're not too scared of mucking things up, especially if you're coming from that. Um, and I'm not really bringing anything new to the table with these processes. I think a lot of artists have covered it. But the, the main thing is to just keep it as simple as possible. That's that's the approach I have. I don't like to use a lot of things that are convoluted. I like to keep it simple. You can get as detail-oriented and as complex as you want, but I, I just think you get speed by keeping it simple. It better start simple, build up, than go crazy in the beginning and, and go back. It's just kind of, you, you want to keep things, you know, a, a, a decent, you know, creative freedom speed across the way. The second method um, we might use is, is similar, but maybe in the beginning you have a really complex shape that's got a lot of curves. It, it might be easier to sculpt it. So it's like, oh, I, I don't want to Z model that. Let me sculpt that base. So then you can sculpt it all up and maybe you don't have to be perfect with it because the idea here is we're going to Z remesh that. And and then either maybe it's just one shape of it and then we resume that, you know, if it's a panel or like, a, um, let me think. You know, anything that like like a fairing or something like that that could shell, you can just Z remesh it, you shell, and then you have a nice clean surface. Now, a lot of times, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with Z remesh or to get it perfect. I just need it to be simple. So it's sculpt, Z remesh, get a clean shape, and then basically clean up the edges, delete a couple edges, and now I have a really basic uh, panel surface or any kind of surface really. And then I can shell it or, you know, do what I need to to it and then sub D it. And then basically we're back up here at the first section where sub D commit sculpt third read details. So both of these are super, super powerful. Um, and you can use whatever along the way. Um, and lastly, this is, is more of the older school version, and it still has its place, you know, it's still used. Um, I would probably say 80% of my modeling is the Z model method uh, base, sometimes maybe five to 10 percent sculpt base. And then the third one is typical, your typical DynaMesh um, sculpting, and you get the shape in H polish and sculpt in third read details. 
Um, generally, the size of what I'm modeling, I, I put this all through filters, through uh, like glasses of uh, basically how I'm going to arrange things. Generally, it, most of the time it's C-model based, but like it, how close you get to things and how far apart away the character is, you can get away with some stuff. So tiny, tiny things hidden under something, you can probably be a little bit sloppy with it, but no one's ever going to notice. That's actually the key to speeding this whole process up, is how close you are to things and how close you're going to get the camera to it. Like you need to always be modeling at a distance and then zoomed up because you can go crazy and get lost in the weeds and then you pull out and you're like, you're not even going to see that. Or you spend a lot of time making something really, really clean where you could have been quicker about it. Th this is all the stuff we learned along the way. When we started, I was pretty much, we learned, Z we, we just were completely Z, at least me. I was, I was like, in order to know Z model, I basically Z modeled something all the way through really detailed. I wouldn't do that now again. And I'll talk about that. There's a couple of models that, that I actually did this on. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But generally, that's the three method approach to, uh, uh, that ZBrush allows us to model, and it's really freeing and very creative. And it's what's really cool is anytime you start reading details, you got to go back. You can still go back. Yeah, you might lose this with a morph target, but you go back to Z model base, step down subdivision level one. There's also the cage. You can move it around, crease, back, and it, and it all stays. Um, so I want to just show real quick. I just showed a brief a section of the torso. This is a skin uh, that I made, a cosmetic skin, uh, a, rev, a tech revenant that is uh, basically an outfit for uh, um, for M2 multiplayer in Doom Eternal. Uh, the base of this was modeled by Peter, so the arms, feet, and the face underneath, and, you know, I just put an outfit on him. But this was all done, probably 80% with the, the first method I talked about over here, the Z model base, crease, uh, subdivision, sculpt, third read details. Um, so let me just step through a couple of these images real quick. This is a front and a back view. And this guy, I can't not unsee this. Um, I've ever, I'm a huge RoboCop fan, and I always call this out. There's a part in RoboCop where there's a, they show a bunch of defunct uh, of, of cops, uh, robots they would be made to compete with RoboCop, and there's one that walks out and kind of stutters and falls down. Uh, the Revenant, all, even without this outfit, the Revenant always puts me in mind of that guy, and it's, when I see this, it's, it totally reminds me of RoboCop. Um, it's a close-up. And and like I said, uh, that, in all the hard surfaces it's done that way. And on the back, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, totally decent. So on the torso here, um, I'm just going to call out this one little section. I know it's really small, but um, with this little piece right here, I can uh, walk through our process, and you can see that, like, basically doing this there, you can duplicate all this across the whole board. So what I'm about to show you on this one piece, I did everything. And it's really, in my opinion, simple. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, undersell it or anything. I mean, everything takes time and, and efficiency to make this clean and neat. Um, but it, it, the tool set is pretty basic. Uh, so basically, there you go, the, the Z model thing, crease, dynamic subdiv, and then the sculpted details. Now I realize, I see this a lot of time in tutorials. It's like, oh, Z model decrease, then there's a massive jump from here to here. I'm going to talk about that. I'm not just going to be like, oh, yeah, it's easy. here you go. Boom, boom. We're done. See you later. Um, <laughs> but this, this is relatively fast to get to this. Obviously, stuff that's free, it's just hitting a button. Uh, usually, I think it's, I usually like to uh, to go to level four on the dynamic subdiv that usually covers most cases. You don't have to. But, you know, it's, you'll usually get nice clean lines. And you can see what I'm talking about with the crease set to two, 35-2. It grabs generally most of these. I don't have to, you know, select a bunch more or anything. So you generally get a nice, clean shape. And now you have this really pretty clean basic shape that you can put all your details in. Now, I could Z-model this, uh, no problem. That ZBrush, if you wanted to, if this was going to be like flying across the screen, maybe I would have. But again, when you put things in perspective, the size of this and how far away, you don't need to. So it's not perfect. There is some boogers in some areas here. But, you know, it's clean enough at that distance that it works really, really well. And if I had, now, the amount of time it would take me to, to probably model that old school way, um, it took versus new with all the, the tools in ZBrush, and it, there's even more coming with some of the newer stuff in ZBrush I wish I had when I made these because the pipeline is always evolving. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing more of that uh, down the road. But let me go ahead and step through this piece right here through the um, different, what, what we use and how I got here. So generally, the first approach when I have uh, this sub feed up, by the way, I don't go into this, it's important to note, I don't do this till every, I have the block out all in one place. Uh, you don't want to go ahead and detail something out like that when you're making character model, especially in a production. You want to because you want to get like a basic you block out block. So I'll have, I'll go basically this the top route here, all the way you know these two, 
method. I'll do the whole thing. Now, I kind of wish I had a slide with this, but like I don't have one saved at that state, so it's kind of confusing. So you got to kind of see through it. Um, so basically, I would have all this blocked out. It'd just be clean surfaces, but nice and clean. And then we take it through run here and then go to sculpt the details. So first thing I'll do is usually figure out my panel lines. Now might be a good time to save a morph target, like I said, because you can morph out with a brush and then you don't have to worry about too much stuff. I did that in the beginning because I was always like, well, I can always go back. I've gotten pretty good with just H polish and like just build to be able to crack mistakes. So the orbs cracks, I'll use that with a really good uh, lazy mouse um, method. So I'll be able to like basically uh, just drag it all around uh, the edges to get clean shapes. Now, I know you're doing this by hand, but it's almost you become like a, um, a painter in a way, and that lazy mouse kind of saves you. you. You can get really, really clean lines, and usually you can kind of one-shot it. Now, here's a trick that will save you with this. Um, I don't even worry if they're a little bit wiggly, because there's one thing that will save your ass, and that is using AccuCurve with Move. Move brush and AccuCurve is vital to be able to get hard surface stuff clean. And I'm not, I know people mention it, but I, I wanna just call out how absolutely vital it is to our process and how I do things is that move, right, and I, I have it you know, on my bar up here. I just turn it right on right up here. I mean, you can, uh, you can look up where it is. Actually, I even, for, I guess, I'm assuming it's under, no, I, I forget where AccuCurve is. It's in the brush. Yeah, I've had it saved for so long. I'm like, where does it even have that anymore? Same um, here. <laughs> So we, so basically, the cool thing is, is like, you know, like you, even if the, if the line's a little wobbly, you, with a, with an curve brush, you can come in and nudge it back in place, and it'll be really nice and clean. So I'll usually figure out all my panel lines, get them all nice and, and sharp, and then basically then I'll come in and be like, what do I need more detail? Actually, secondly, I usually like to do is find out my reliefs and and, and what I'm going to push in and push out. And there's a real balance to that when you're doing hard surface details. You all, you don't want to have everything going in. And then, or everything coming out. And what I'm talking about is I'll call this out. I use the mask brush. I'll just paint a mask in here. And then I'll probably, a lot of times I alter between smoothing the mask and sharpening it, which is powerful. You can use alphas for this stuff. But a lot of times I don't want to come, again, everything was made with just this stuff here because I don't want to dig for alphas in, in a panel. I want to be, it's faster for me to be like, I can just paint, I know what shape I need to paint this. So I'll paint all these lines around here and mask, not all at once, obviously. I'll just, you know, mask this area, mask this area. Probably this has got a softer edge, so I probably smooth it. Then I'll use the gizmo move tool and push it in, and then I'll you know sculpt a little bit of detail on top of it. Over here, you know, I'll just paint you know the the the, the you know the shape was this rectangle, and instead like it's got a tight edge there. Then I'll just I'll basically use the move brush and then uh, transform with the rotate and push it in, so it's rotating from the edge. Here is uh, the same process as this, but inverted. Um, basically, I paint around all the bolt holes and stuff like that. I'll smooth it and then push it out. Um, this indent here is a, a basic H polish. Uh, a standard brush. Uh, it, this, a lot of people forget about this guy. He's still my buddy. Um, that's how I get all of these uh, lips here. Um, and believe it or not, this is just with lazy mouse. Like, and I'll usually take the, uh, the fall off down so it's like sharp so you get a nice ball. This like curve to it so it's sharp on the edges. And not like you, all, you want that crease right there, right? So then I'll just trace this around, and then you have this nice little lip here. Uh, I believe I use it here, um, th th these little knot knobs here. And we're not talking about pushing things in and out with surface details. You'll see there's a balance of that. In, I mean, it's in, out, in, in. Uh, it's all about balancing that. If every, if all that is doing one way, it'll look a little odd. You want, you want a little balance when you're sculpting the surface. Uh, these little tiny details. By the way, you know, even in production. Uh, this is this is where character artists get to shine because you know concept guys can't design every little piece like this. A strong character artist needs to fill in, in the gaps, so we need to be able to fill in all these details. Um, they certainly can't afford their time to do it. You know, um, I mean, it depends on what we're making. I mean, concept that it, it it ranges. Like sometimes we get something rough, sometimes we get something very specific, um, and we the character artist needs to be able to to you know, you know complete the task. Um, so ba yeah, basically that all you do all that. That is applied to everything on here, you know. Um, so a question came through. Sure. When you're doing that piece, are you just going straight into Z Modeler or are you doing a little quick block out, uh, really rough, and then switching to Z Modeler? Uh, so it's interesting. I think this this varies uh, depending on when. I'm going to date myself, but I've been doing this for a while, and I came up in poly modeling. So it's just so ingrained in me um, with, with a background of poly modeling. So I generally would just use – I'll create a primitive – um, and then I will just usually go from there, like real crude, delete all the edges. So it's just a box. And then I'll just push them around. 
Um, a lot, there's a lot of cool. There's um, the brush that I use to kind of manipulate that is um, the move infinite depth because it's screen based and shoots right through, which is awesome for forming out blockouts. I mean, that's a really good question because I wasn't going to mention this, and it, that's why I like questions in the process because it makes me think of things I didn't think about. This brush is also imperative in a blockout because you can make stuff really clean. Before we had this, is a little tricky. You had to like basically mask out with an area and then use a transform tool. I got by with it, but whenever they finally, when you guys added this, I was so happy. Um, but it's so easy to manipulate a really low cage uh, to get an interesting uh, mechanical shape, and it's going to be very precise. Now, don't do. I usually kill my perspective when I do this, so I'm looking at this very orthographically. Uh, so that's that's vital for it. But yeah, I generally um, don't. Uh, I, it depends, though. Like I said uh, earlier in the process, let me step back to the slide real quick. Um, how am I? I'm 16. Okay, I'm all right on time. Um, is the I have a little clock going up here, so I want to make sure I don't run into these guys' time too much. The um, that goes back to the first two bases. You can see them out of the base, or you can sculpt it. And basically, these top two are the same. It's just it, actually they're all pretty the same. It's just the beginning. How do you start? And that depends on how you want to approach the problem. Not, not one of these is wrong. So you can just do a sculpted base and zero mesh it, um, which some of us do. And um, on this guy, I think I mostly did uh, the block out, but it depends. I, 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 when I get through the actual renders that I'm going to step through, um, uh, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that. But yeah, uh, that's the basic approach to all these, and um, uh, that's how I just we tackle the whole problem. Um, and Peter and Dens are going to kind of share their process of how they uh, 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 approach their characters and, and demo some of those exact things. I mean, and uh, they'll get into the weeds with that. But first, before I get into that, I want to kind of step through some of the renders, talk about some stuff that we did on on, on the project, and we'll start off with this big guy. Um, this is Denzel's character, and this was, I'll let Denzel get into this a little bit when he gets to this, but this was done in the beginning, probably Z model heavy. We probably could have done a little bit different, but there's nothing wrong with that. Like, getting really friendly with Z model and knowing how to attack it still makes you strong. It, it, we may, it may have taken us a little bit longer to make things, but they're really precise and clean. And now the process is just like, we, we, we try to keep it as simple as possible and sculpt on top of it. Um, and like the dental talk about this whenever it's just his turn to go here in a minute. Um, but it's a great, it's just an awesome post lighting and rendering. Um, we tried to, all, all these are on ArtStation, by the way. Um, so you can, the full HD versions of these on my, my, my own, our uh, dentals or Peter's. So feel free to check them out. They're really high. They're, they're, they're 4k resolution. So you can say you, you guys also made an artist dump on Zebra Central too. Yes, that's very true. Thanks, Paul. It's all on Zebra Central as well. There's the man himself. To reiterate, you guys are doing all of this in ZBrush. You're doing all the hard surface, all yep. the organic that you're yep. doing. Everything. All 100% ZBrush. Yep. Now, in the beginning of the project, I think it took, uh, to be fair, in the very beginning, I think some of us came on a little bit late to this. But yeah. uh, it definitely what started, the, like the first couple of characters, we started completely migrating over. I was complete ZBrush, probably about halfway through. And then um, what we did was uh, I started talking to guys about it. And I understand, like a lot of people that come from a traditional poly modeling background, yeah. Z modeler is tricky, but that's anything that's new. You, you just gotta spend time with it. And I think some of the guys were at first were kind of like, oh, you know, um, it's just, you have to get over the hump with it because you approach things differently. But I can't think any, our entire team went right to it. Like, I don't think anybody was like, after like they got it, it just clicks and you can't go back. Um, I don't even know. It'd be, it'd be weird for me to go to a traditional package and model again. I mean, I could do it, but why would I? Staying inside a ZBrush gives us so much freedom. Um, and I, if I could stay in one package forever, I would. It's just fast. And speed is everything in production. Uh, this is actually, so as far as the pipeline is concerned, this is the beginning stages of that. Like, I think I was starting Z Modeler on the Rachnatron. I think the Marauder and the Rachnatron was the beginning of it. And um, the Dread Knight, which I'll show here in a second, was uh, the most. Uh, was where I went like full bore um, uh, with, with, with all the whole process. That's just him at, uh, you know, mid, mid range. Um, and so uh, the Dread Knight, yes, this is actually uh, the one that like on his arm, um, I actually Z modeled the whole thing full tilt. And I think some of the face actually, actually, yeah, the face and the arm were like full bore Z model or no, no sculpting on top of it. Just straight up 100% poly modeling. And then that's when I was like, you know, I can get by with introducing so much other elements and faster we start doing like speed. 
And a lot, uh, by the way, it's really important to know that like we didn't pave the way of this anyway. A lot of artists were already doing this. Um, it was more about like, hey, we need to do this, but get it clean. Cleaning and control is, I'm really anal about that with like, because it's, it's a sculpting program. If you're not careful, you can get stuff that's a little bit doughy and sculpty, and that breaks the illusion of things being hard service. So I don't care how you get there in ZBrush, as long as it's clean. That, that's the that's the takeaway from it. And the cool thing is ZBrush gives you all the tools to do that. Like, there's no, you know, you're not lost in the weeds there. It's like, well, actually, you, can, you have a lot of choices, a lot of evidence. Um, and I'm, 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 not, I'm sure I'm not hitting them all, um, but like, that's the basics of it. But yeah, on this one, like, and I think basically uh, on the face and arms and stuff, I did a full Bosley modeler, and then the rest I kind of uh, um, started experimenting and started breaking out more into to, to keeping the cage of the model really low and then sculpting on top of it. Um, and that, that, that was what I was like, man. It also, by the way, I love polymod and polymodeler, but the more intense the model is, the more tedious it gets. And, it, and when you're putting a time frame with that, it kind of sucks a little bit. And so when I get when I got back to to doing it this way, it, it was just like a, a love for it all over again. So I'm like, holy cow, dude, this is so much better, you know. Um, and I, and I feel like the tool set has finally arrived. I, I can kind of leave it all behind. It was so freeing. Um, and I and I watched. What was really cool I was really nervous because I was like, I don't want to push this on everybody because I know it's a big change. But please try this. And everybody at first was like, the team is so open minded. I, I love the character guys we work with. I mean, they're all awesome. And they all slowly were stumbling in the beginning, like similar to what I was. And then they, but they all figured it out. Uh, but it was like me, I think Emmanuel and Denz were kind of experimenting at the same time. Uh, but then we started passing it on to, to everybody else and it just kind of broke from there. Um, this was the whole process. Uh, that, that, this is more of the, the um, going back to the Z model crease and, and model on top of it. Like this is when we kind of had our bearings. Um, and, and this was done in a, in a I, I wish I actually had, could give you the actual time savings. But we were finishing it a couple weeks. Models were finishing earlier, and the fidelity was way up. And like, you can't complain with that. Like, that writing's on the wall. If you can get more clean fidelity and you're you're shaving time off, that's a win. If the schedule would have stayed the same, that still would have been a win, in my opinion, because the fidelity's going up. Um, and that that's how it is with everything. Every couple of years, things just get more and more involved and more intense, and it takes a little longer to make. But ZBrush allows you to bridge that that gap. Especially in game, uh, in the game pipelines, we still bake models to the high uh, resolution. You can, you can get kind of bananas with it. Yeah, you're, uh, using, which is you're awesome. using the other program to do the baking. Yes. And, yep. and some of your painting, too, of course. Yes. Yeah. Are you using any poly paint during the process? I, I do poly paint. Like, that's a good one to call out, though, guys. Sometimes I'm using poly paint to figure out basic colors. Uh, I don't have good examples of it, but I, I know Peter and Denz uh, are definitely familiar with that, and they, they definitely lay out some of their color stuff in, in ZBrush, for sure. Um, this actually was experimenting more with Booleans on, on, on um, uh, the, the, the Cyber Mancubus here. Uh, I still use Booleans. I use them a little bit more sparingly, but like it was pretty cool testing out like you know how far I could get it. So this guy was a little Boolean heavy. I would probably not use him as much in only certain areas this time. Again, you have different tool sets to use. Which one am I going to use at the time? Booleans are very are, are another awesome feature that shouldn't be forgotten. Um, oh, I like this render. It's a pretty cool pose. Um, there were a couple of questions that came in, uh, sure. <clears throat> sorry, regarding uh, wh when you actually make a decision to sculpt the detail or texture the detail. Um, oh, well, that's a good question. Uh, well, in hard surface, it's, I'm going to almost always put it in there. The only time I texture detail is very high frequency. Like, uh, I, I'm glad I stepped back to this. All these dents and scratches, I would not sculpt that in. That's all done. I would keep it very clean, like, like on the model I was just showing. It's basically... You want a nice clean surfaces. I'm not going to put little dick, a little tiny nicks and scratches on here. I mean, maybe if you're going to, there's optional time to do that, but in a, in a game pipeline, you want to do that more in surfacing. As a matter of fact, we keep things cleaner than we ever have been now, and we save a lot of that stuff for uh, painter or texture pipeline stuff. Um, the Marauder here, uh, that's everyone's character, character to hate when it came, first came out. Um, uh, this was also in the beginning process. He's a little bit more basic business. The surfaces aren't complex. But this was the, the same process. I think I cut my teeth on this, I believe, on the Rattanshawn and the Marauder. And then um, when we finally committed, it was more like the, 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 the con maker and uh, the Mancubus hard surface and stuff and, and forward. Uh, here's the big guy with his axe. Um, yeah, and like now all these surfaces here, it's a good question. It's a good question to answer your question here. 
some of these big gashes and stuff, you have to sculpt that. You have to sculpt hero gashes and details. You can't do that in surfacing. It's got to be in ZBrush. You have to. But then all this tiny, tiny stuff that's surfacing that's not in uh, uh, that character for pipeline game pipeline. You can solve that with tileable detailing maps and a couple other things that I don't want to get into now for. But like, yeah, the big scratches and gouges and all this stuff that's all sculpted detail. It has to be in ZBrush for sure. Um, right, that, that would just be a pain in the butt. I mean, you probably could do that in surfacing, maybe, but I, 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 don't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to wait to do that. That's stuff I'll call out in the sculpts. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Uh, this is the um, Revenant. Uh, this is one of Peter's models. Uh, it's a pretty cool pose. Uh, this was probably, uh, I'm not, I don't think Peter had gotten to the pipe and ZBrush method. Yeah, this was yet. a pretty early one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this but is he's a, a picture uh, for you, a, Peter. Like an external package. Yeah, so this is you're using a different package to do all your hard yeah. surface stuff. Uh, yeah, and then bring it in a ZBrush for some scratches and stuff. So, yeah. You know, it's pretty, I think, 2018 or something. Yeah, it is. this was this is early. Early on. Um, this is a really cool pose. This is when he gets his armor shot off. Um, I, I love the breakables aspect of Doom. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to just, you know, basically shred demons down to their bones. Um, it's, it's a really, it's awesome. I mean, it's also, that's just the first layer. He's not even gored up. You know, that's just like the breakable section. Then there's gore on top of it. He can blast and tear up. You know. um, I, I love this pose. It, it's like he dropped something or he forgot to tie his shoe. He's like, ah, <laughs> uh, but this is another one. of these. <laughs> He's like, damn it. Uh, this is another one of Peter's models or like the ceiling's too low. Or he's like, ah, I can't see. Um, uh, yeah, this guy's really cool. It's a tyrant. Um, and now he's upset about it. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, but <laughs> this, this, this is great. Um, great character. Awesome work. It's also the very uh, first one that I made when I uh, got on the project. So this is even older than the Revenant. Yeah. So a lot of this is just poly modeling in Max, and then I'll bring it over to ZBrush and do it. Yeah. Some yeah. things. Sure. But you can see, like, at the that's so, at the beginning. That's where we were, and then where we yeah, ended. Yeah. Like, it's 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 so cool. Um, this is actually one of my favorite characters. Uh, and this is Whiplash. This is another Peter's model. This is a fucking awesome character. Um, it's just that from game design, from the from the design all the way down, it's just super cool. Love it. Um, I agree. I love this it's one. So cool. It's so cool. That's a cool one. Yeah. I love the teeth and the, the face. It's just awesome. I thought Alex Palma was a concept designer on this. Yeah. And the transition from the organic upper torso into the body of the hard surface, like that's, that's beautiful. That's great work. Yeah. yeah. Great flow. Um, the back is really cool on this. Yeah. Um, it's such a cool character. That's love that skin. It's nasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to get close to that. <laughs> And uh, this is actually by uh, this is a, the Dark Lord, it's a DLC model by Philip Bailey. Um, he, he's a principal uh, environment artist. Actually, he does a lot of organic stuff, and he wanted to, to join the character team. So we're glad to have him. He's been with us for one or two years now, over probably two years now. Um, and this is one of his first uh, characters he did. And this was uh, an uh, Z model uh, through, uh, right all the way through. Um, the process, the top process I was talking about, the Z model base uh, method. And it's great. It, uh, this was. It was also uh, an interesting feedback pipeline with this, with that method. This is where we were to change things way rapidly, so it wasn't like you're not that committed to things. Like it's easy to, like, especially surface panel lines, you just erase them, draw them back in, get approval. You're not having to like kill polygons or ugh. like it just gives me nightmares of the old days and that kind of stuff. Um, that is it. I have one more thing that I want to mention, um, but that is it for us. It is uh, that. Guess what, guys? We are hiring. Um, we have positions available now at here, and I think they're linking this in the chat. I think Kyle has mentioned we'll get it up there somewhere for y'all. So it, it, I believe it's just a generic character art position at the moment, but I don't care. It, any, we're looking for all, uh, any range, um, from senior to, to, to junior to mid-level. So please, uh, if you if you want to come model monsters, demons, hard service, or, I mean, we do it all, all the fun stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, in my opinion, um, I've been here for uh, 10 years now. I don't see myself going anytime yeah. soon. Um, so we are hiring, and all positions, like I said, for the project that's coming up. Uh, and uh, if it's not there, I would still try to, um, you know, I think there's, I think we have some generic, but I'm assuming most people would apply for character art in here. But um, yeah, we're looking for people. Um, so if you have what it takes, please hit me up. 
Uh, through the website, of course. Don't flood my Facebook or our station. <laughs> I, I don't mind that either, but like, you know, just, just mind. Just, Somehow uh, finds uh, your personal phone number. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> are you guys staying, staying uh, in the studio atmosphere like the way you guys are right now? Everyone can stay where they're at or? Well, so student location, studio we, 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 that's a very good question. And I figured that was going to be come up. Thanks for asking. Uh, right now, it, it, we are all remote still. Um, we are at this hybrid method and open to. So the basic rule of thumb here is that none of this is concrete. Uh, they're open to senior talent being remote, mid-level and junior. They're not. They're, they want more of a hybrid approach. I think when we go back to the office, it'll be hybrid. Um, but it, it things are possible. It, it, if I would say, if you're interested in working here, uh, it, don't hesitate to apply because nothing's in concrete yet, and we're still working out the details on that. Um, I, the times are changing, and so is the industry. Uh, we don't want to count with our pants down, but we don't have a d definitive. Uh, right now, it's it's going to be hybrid, but we're still work from home. Sure. I don't know when we're going to go back just just yet, um, but whenever we do, there, it will be a hybrid method. Um, uh, but like, what positions are going to be allowed to be fully remote versus uh, coming on is is up in the air. So, okay. Um, that's it for me, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to toss this over to Denz, and he can show you some of the good stuff. All right. Cool. That was that was awesome. Um, yeah, hey guys, um, my name is Denzel O'Neill. Um, I've been with Ed as a character artist uh, for nine years now, which is uh, kind of crazy to think about. Um, eight of those years I worked with Jace um, in Dallas. Uh, we're currently working uh, from home in Australia. Um, so yeah, I had the opportunity to work on uh, Doom 2016 um, and most recently Doom Eternal, um, which was a special project because um, I was given the opportunity to work on the Doom Slayer. So, uh, as Jace mentioned, um, there's so many techniques uh, for hard surface um, in, Z in ZBrush, um, ranging from sculpting to uh, poly modeling. Um, but the, the beauty of the program is that you can mix and match uh, all those different different techniques um, to varying degrees. You know, depending on kind of what you want to do with the asset, uh, time constraints, uh, and stuff like that. So. Here's the Doom Slayer here. Um, he's 100% demodeled um, in ZBrush. So we knew he was going to be a hero asset and, um, you know, the camera is going to be up close on the surfaces. So one of the things we wanted to push was the, uh, the Z model aspect and get that, uh, you know, really clean surfaces um, and that kind of sub D uh, look that you get to models. Um, so I'll just get into some of the pieces here. So everything is still uh, non-collapsed. Um, and you can go back into the low poly. So uh, when you press D, you'll just go into the sub-div mode. Um, and as you can see here, um, the meshes are pretty low poly. And one of the things that uh, ZBrush helps uh, to achieve that is the uh, crease edges. So instead of uh, like back in the old days, you had to um, add holding edges to everything. So you would have double edges everywhere. Um, in ZBrush, you can just use crease edges, um, which acts as like a double loop. So that will... Um, create tighter edges so that you can, oh, I've got my time here. <laughs> um, basically just create shapes. Um, yeah, so I'll go down to the body here. Um, so as you can see, this is one contiguous mesh. Um, it's all box modeled. Uh, there are some pros and cons to keeping everything uniform and contiguous. So um, I'd say one of the pros is that you can, move stuff around and keep stuff together. Um, cons is probably, it takes a bit more time, but um, when you're moving stuff around, um, things don't kind of separate. So, um, and one of the things I wanted to achieve with this model was the leather kind of poking through um, and like jutting up against the pieces. So um, having that kind of cut in look um, kind of helped uh, with achieving that. You go down to the leg here, um, and you can see, um, as Jace was mentioning, uh, the use of boolean. So this is before we started sculpting stuff. So you can see there's a lot of um, booleans peppered around the model um, to create uh, the smaller details like holes and rivets. Um, even here, we have a cut line. So some of the cut lines um, were modeled as booleans as well, separate subtools. Um, one of the benefits of that is that you can keep the uh, clean underlying mesh um, and then have a lot of detail on top that doesn't disturb uh, anything underneath. 
That's a good point. What Dens just mentioned, Paul. Like that, that's something I forgot. To, I, I use that a couple times on panel lines on the uh, Mancubus and stuff. It's a that's a, a good use for booleans that I think some people might not think about is uh, for panel lines. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's like a not more of a non-destructive approach. So you can keep yeah. your panel lines separately, and then you can do whatever you need anywhere else on the surface. Totally. Yeah. So these are, but these you didn't. This is like the the one that's going in the engine, right, Denzel? Or are you actually doing this with the modeler? That's all. Yeah, this right? is like the high res, um, all done in Z modeler. Um, wow. Really? Basically, wow. just box wow. modeled. Yeah, like I said, we pushed it. We basically, Paul, wow. like, yeah, the idea was um, to push it as much as as we possibly could. Like, and that, that's why I'm saying, like, we're so confident that like anything polymodel can be made in Z modeler. Absolutely easier. Yeah. I mean, nowadays, I think we would do it. Then that looked like your comment. I think we would probably not go this far. We'd probably scoff a little bit on it now. But like, yeah. find, knowing that we could go that far, you know, it's just that you, you push it as far as you can so you have that ability and you learn a lot. Uh, so I think it's still a powerful tool. But I, I don't know necessarily we would we'd probably, you know, it depends on the artist, really. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. great. Oh, well, how much? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can get super detailed. Um, I would say, like, you know, because I like Jace come from the traditional packages of um, box modeling, um, sub D modeling. And so, yeah, coming to Z modeler was a bit scary. Can we achieve that kind of level of detail? Um, but now going back, I would never go back to traditional methods just because um, ZBrush keeps you in this, I guess, kind of ecosystem um, that is just very intuitive. And um, yeah, this, it's one of the benefits also is that it's very difficult to make like funky uh, geo, like. Engons and stuff like that. I think it's literally impossible. Um, yeah, so yeah. There's no Engons. Yeah, have mm -hmm. Engons. Yeah. You so can, you can't sculpt uh, an Engon. That's why ZBrush doesn't. You can't sculpt across an Engon. Oh right. Yeah. So that's one of the it's reasons. Not possible. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, that keeps you within the, like a certain kind of um, constraint, but doesn't really limit you. I just yeah. I would never. I couldn't imagine making this in another package. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Wow. Well, <laughs> um, so, how many LOD? How many uh, levels of detail do you have for this one? This character. Uh, levels of detail? Do you mean um, like in the? In well, the you have your high res. Do you have as? It's, do you have levels of details for this? Character? He's a main character. Uh, right? No, because this was not. Um, this was before sculpting. So, this is just a low res mesh with a dynamic sub div applied, um, and then booleans on top. So there's oh, no. Are you talking about different levels of detail in the in game engine, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like we, we the, um, the engine all, uh, automatic LODs are characters, so we don't okay. have to make them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we have some grip on the shoes there. Um, all, all this stuff is one contiguous mesh as well. Um, stuff like the knife. Um, so back in the day, we uh, we used a ray mesh to build things in the center of the world, and then look how it, how they look on the arm, um, and then you know still have the symmetry. I think. Today, um, stagger might be a better way to do that, or another way to do that. Um, yeah, and sometimes I would also build a box, like a very simple box, um, so that I could bring it up up to the arm and use the box as like a, a uh, an anchor point for the gizmo, so I could always have that that X Y Z um, space to work in. I'll move over the helmet. So I'm trying to get through this pretty quick because um, we've got the demo as well. So the helmet um, was a cool piece to work on um, just because so much emphasis was put on the getting the design correct. Um, as you can see, so it's also one contiguous mesh. Um, so um, it was built to function in a real helmet in the sense that um, it has an inside and it's all um, connected and you can fit a human head in there. So all the insides modeled in, um, and it's just all the same technique. So I was just going to show you some of the, um, here you can see like how many um, Boolean things we have. So those are just like IMM brushes, um, some basic ones that come with ZBrush, and then some that I've kind of modeled myself and then add them in. And then there are um, bevels on, uh, sorry, Booleans on top of Boolean, so going in, and then there's kind of um, assets inside the boolean so that kind of gives the model a nice layered um effect and look to it what's your final triangle count for the in-game for this piece they're asking and how many pieces does it did it end up being for the low poly 
No, for your, when you in the engine, what was your guys' final? No. What was your triangle count that you allowed for this particular character? Hundred page eights, I think, somewhere around there. Ballpark, yeah. Uh, our our, tri our uh, ballpark, yeah. Honestly, our triangle in-game count it, it, it is actually a lot slower, more, smaller, or smaller than a lot of people think. Like because of the speed, sixty speed is everything. Yeah, you're like a Ferrari running around. So they keep, we keep, and there's a lot of characters. So we're like like the main character can be about a hundred, but some of the monsters are thirty to fifty to seventy. Uh, but like that, that, that's a big guy. You know, uh, I'm ballparking here, but yeah. It's yeah, we, we we got a lot. We have to squeeze a lot of the flows. <clears throat> and how many across? How many pieces usually? Four or five? Six, uh, five. I mean, broken up pieces to low yeah. poly. Oh yeah. yeah, like their torso, legs, arms. Depends on the model. Like okay. it, it doesn't really have a limit to it. Is sure. the texture size is more of the issue there? Um, it, it, so we usually try to keep it like. Between, around five texture sets right now, depending. Hero character got more, like this guy. I'm, Dan's going to answer that. I don't remember how many texture sets he had. Uh, yeah, around that range, yeah. And pieces yeah, was probably just trying to keep up the chat. It? The chat's rolling for you guys right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like a doom. it's seriously like Doom in the chat right now. They're like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sorry, um, go ahead, Den. Yeah, sorry. So. <laughs> Here we just splayed the model out. Um, this was a trick that Jace used um, in the original 2016 uh, with the helmet, uh, where we splayed it out to get the field of view, um, looking from the Doomslayer's perspective so you could look through the helmet. So it's the same helmet. Um, we just kind of flattened it out. Um, as you can see all the inside there, I think I added a few more details just to get a better read on, on a closer up view. Um, all right, so I was just gonna do a demo now on kind of getting one of those pieces from like the blobby sculpt stage uh, into uh, a nice cleaner stage. Um, so I just started here with um, a Matabarasaurus, which is a, a local dinosaur from where I'm from, Queensland, um, for this demo. And so here I've just sculpted some hard surface pieces. So I wanted to go for like a, a dino riders kind of feel, um, if you're old enough to remember that show. <laughs> which is show. Um, most, most people probably don't know what it is now. Um, yeah, so that's just straight up sculpting, uh, standard brush, pinch, move, um, yeah, all the all the um, standard fare. And so I'll come to the finished um, piece. So it demonstrates like all the different techniques uh, that you can use. So I'll be just kind of going over the sleeve piece. Um, and then up here, this, so these parts are just like straight up sculpted. Um, taking the, the blobby part, um, Ziri meshed it and then, and then to sculpt. Um, so yeah, there's just that's the awesome thing about ZBrush. You can stay in the same ecosystem and do so many different techniques um, and just roll with kind of how you want to take things. Um, so I was going to work on this sleeve piece. So yeah, so I started with this. Um, so that's already decimated. I'm going to just Ziri mesh that to as low as we possibly can. And that should get us like a the lower the better. Um, otherwise, you're kind of going to spend more time just chopping uh, stuff out that you don't need. So that should pop up in a second. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. So um, it already gives you some of the polyflow uh, that you need. So basically, uh, when you press D, that'll go into the sub D mode. And um, so it all looks pretty soft now because we don't have any um, creases or holding edges. So if we um, start, so I'm in the Z modeler brush, um, and the cool thing about it is just one brush. You hold down space, um, and it'll give you the context. So you can do polygon, uh, edge, or vert. So I'll just be switching through those. So we're on edge crease. Um, so if we go through and crease here some edges, um, or you can see that starting to sharpen up. So uh, as Jace was mentioning before, the different um, kind of options to get the nice uh, sub D look. You kind of want about a uh, dynamic sub div of four, three to four, and a crease um, of two, two to three. So that'll give you a nice soft look. Um, it also depends kind of on the, on the resolution of your model, um, but that's generally works for most things. So um, if we look now, it's starting to get a bit uh, more shape. It's here, start cleaning stuff up. So I want to make a kind of um, a bold shape here on the on the uh, on the forearm, and it actually already has 
um, pretty much that edge flow. Um, so one one way I add edges. Um, so I learned this before um, slice mesh was introduced, Paul, and um, I still use this way because I guess I'm just used to it, and I like the, uh, the kind of methodology of it. Is um, insert edge loop. So if you go polygon, uh, insert uh, sorry insert poly loop, hold it down, that'll give you your edge, um, and then you can slide it. So you can slide the partial. And then give that a bevel. So that'll give us um, somewhere where we can uh, add in a cut. So if we transpose that um, and then go into Gizmo and then hold down control, that'll that'll let you um turn off the wings a second. That'll so I want to call something out real quick too while Denz is doing this. It, it's really interesting. Like sometimes panel lines in the low are absolutely easier to do there than drawing out. So it just kind of becomes like after you use this process, you kind of get used to like oh you can just kind of see how it is and add it in like in the low. It's just kind of convenient. So it's kind of like oh I can just panel loop this and drop an edge real quick. It's faster than me painting it. It but it, it takes some mileage of getting used to working that way. But it, it just kind of like this thing's kind of pop up now and again, but oh, I'll just, I'll just throw an edge loop in here and, and make a panel line as opposed to you know, sculpting it in. It's just whatever's faster or clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, if the structure's already there, then sometimes it's easy just to cut it in uh, in the polys, yeah. Or if it doesn't work with your structure, then um, sculpting for sure. Um, and one of, the, one of the awesome things about ZBrush uh, poly modeling is that you still have access on the fly to all your um, sculpting brushes, so it's a lot more organic. So, um, I will use pinch, um, smooth, uh, smooth on a really low intensity is awesome for um, cleaning up the mesh. So uh, if you hold down shift, let go of shift, it'll it'll pop out, or you can kind of degrade the mesh um, by just holding down shift. Um, also, like standard brush, so pinch brush. So if I want this um, on this shape to have a bit more uh, a tighter edge, I'll just come in with a pinch brush run that through and then uh standard brush push that out and you can see it's starting to hold more shape now just because those edges are closer together um so i'm just going to add a bit more detail to check in time uh, so here we can come here um q mesh is actually one of the coolest things ever like mm -hmm. takes a bit of uh use getting used to like what it's going to do but um you can create details so fast with it sometimes um Sometimes you I, I, yeah, Q mesh is definitely a call out. That thing saves so much time, for sure. Man, it's awesome. I will just make a little inset here. Yeah, and I want to call it to the one. The very first feature he used to create a triangle on the backside for him too, so he didn't have the loop go all the way around the whole piece here, too. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not worried about too worried about creating clear zero or um, you know worrying about triangles because there's going to be so many opportunities to link uh, you know loops up or hide loops in in, um, in crevices and stuff that um, you're just trying to concentrate on getting the shape to where you want it to be. Um, Another cool thing too is. Uh... Uh, what you can do when you keep your base low, a lot of times your people are worried about pinching because you can see up and where he pushed that in. A lot of times back in the day, you might get a pinch there. I don't. We don't worry about that anymore because you can edge polish that out. Like no, no sweat, dude. You know why? Why worry about cutting another edge loop to smooth that, like traditional poly modeling? Because you can just edge polish it out. Um, that's another time saver. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's another great thing. You're not stuck with the geo, so. Um, let's add this little detail here. Man, I'm sweating. <laughs> it's hot here in Australia. I don't know if that's You're looking good, though, man. It's uh, how you're quick you're yeah. doing all this for them. I think you're you're uh, opening yeah. some eyes, maybe, I think, for people, too. So you're doing great. Yeah, you're absolute wizard with this Thanks stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just you kind of get in Zen mode, actually. Like, Whereas I think before in other packages, it was like, anxiety mode but you can just keep doing this for days um <laughs> yeah then, i think uh, old school box modeling to me was like almost like mathematical equations because you had to figure out your topology where are you going to go yeah. edge loops yeah and like it wasn't the creative as much as yeah. you can get say with this per se 
Yeah, like seriously, that, that that kind of slows that stuff down sometimes. I mean, complexity definitely hurts that. Um, and keeping it like it's fun. It's it's interesting that when that younger talent coming up, like they just never, they just start with ZBrush. It's like they didn't know. Um, they don't have to, you know. That's why sometimes the sculpt. That's why the methods. It doesn't matter as long which 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 way you end up is what matters. Not the uh, the approach is what the model looks like. And there's there's you can take three different streets to get there, or more than that. Actually, we just mentioned three. Yeah, well, look what he's done in what is, has only been like five minutes, like that yeah. top part, right? That, that so is, clean looking. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's money. So I'm just going to add right. a little Boolean here. Um, yeah. So I just dragged an Iron Man basic. Um, now I'll just yeah, split I'll, I'll, this. Uh, so split unmasked points, and then that'll put its own sub tool. And it's just as simple as going um, subtraction. Pushing that in, turn on live boolean, and give that a color. And then kind of just getting the angle correct on that. Um, a lot of, on the um, on my custom brushes, there's a setting right pull where it can it can conform more to the mesh underneath when you when you draw it on. No on fancy. The, the projection. Yeah. Yeah, the projection, yeah. So yeah. that helps with a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's in the then, brush palette modifiers. There's a projection slider. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it? Do we have time? Yeah. How much time? Am I on half an hour close? Mm, we're at three twelve. You got time again. All it's only me and Ashley next for our stuff, so you're good. Don't okay. feel so. Hurry up! So you're have, already um, working. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I have a. Uh, one um, Z model brush that I've separated out and I use it for all the, um, uh, what do we call that? Like the- The topology? Yeah, the topology um, yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah. um, I have that and then, so all the, the, the parts of that brush are, are geared towards that mode. So I don't have to change anything. Um, yeah, there's one in Lightbox too. Oh, okay, those, cool, cool. Yeah, for those that don't know what he's referring to, there's one in Lightbox. That allows you to. He's turning on all the snapping ability with edge, um, with vertex and edge looping, so he can draw right on the surface with polygons. Yeah. So this will just be a little cut line. Um, you can crease where you want, or actually, you can add in. We'll add in some edges where you want things to be a bit tighter to hug the mesh. Um, by the way, what he's doing right there is whatever is faster. Sometimes crease is faster. Sometimes chopping an edge is faster. Your just brain just get, learns to, to click which one's quicker. Um, it's, it's no, no wrong. There's no wrong way there, but sometimes dropping an edge is faster than worrying about a crease. Yeah. It's interesting. You use a lot of gizmo. It's interesting to see how much you're using the gizmo too as a modeling technique too. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we. I'm a. I'm big on the gizmo myself too. Yeah. Oh, love it. The uh, yeah. the the trans the transposing Z modeler seems to be a hidden feature that every time I show up, people like, wait, you can do that, and then <laughs> you're flying with it. I, st I I use a transpose as well. Um, yeah. I find yeah for organic stuff it feels more intuitive for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that'll give you a, a little cut line. Um, what you can do is add a bit more structure to it. So insert an edge, transpose the edge, and kind of push it. If you hold down control and scale, it'll do like a universal push. Um, increase that edge, increase some of these edges as well. Make it um, more tight, tighter edges. And then, so that'll give you a, a you know, different kind of look. Um, and the cool thing about this method um, is that you can um, colorize it for, you know, baking methods or just for the visual look of it. Um, and then from here, you can, so if I, you can, uh, there's a dynamic sub, you can collapse. The poly paint's a cool idea for that stuff. That's, that's dope. And then you can. You can sculpt um, to your heart's content.
uh, on top of that. So you can have all these techniques kind of going at once. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, I did all right for time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can hand that over now. That's great. Yeah, what, you did what, that so what, fast. Yeah, and what you just got done in that time. Look at that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. I think you opened up people's eyes, just seeing it in action helps a lot to see what you're doing and relating yeah. to what you guys have been talking about already during this presentation. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So we're moving. Uh, Peter's next. Yeah. All right. Let's throw yours on. Cool. So yeah, Peter, made, Peter, uh, Peter made that sphere. Yeah, I made mean, it's sphere. It's Any a color feature in 2021.7. Uh, <laughs> It's a new feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Jason talked about our workflow and how there's, uh, there's like uh, three different approaches to hard surface modeling. Now Denzel showed the, the proper way of doing it with Z modeler, all, all clean and proper. And now uh, I have a thing where I um, kind of wanted to take this uh, third method a step further and not uh, use any poly modeling at all. So um, it's all uh, trying to trying to avoid um, poly modeling, Z modeling, uh, and only Z remesh were necessary. And I had um, for this occasion, I dug up an old personal project of mine, which is from uh, from 2016. So uh, there's a little sketch I had, and I, I turned it into this uh, concept, and this thing here is actually like my my messy uh, Dynamesh block out from back then. Um, I did all the, like back then, my approach would have been to make this block out in ZBrush and then take it over uh, back to 3ds Max and do like a sub D modeling pass on top of that. And then um, I got as far as like uh, thinking about a few uh, details on the visor there. Uh, anyway, then then um, some some other things happened, real life stuff, and in its software, and uh, this never went anywhere. So um, I dug this up because it's got both uh, hard surface and, and organic stuff, and um, this is kind of the updated the updated design where I picked out some of the some of the details from back then, and I wanted to try um, making this. Um, just with, uh, well, just with uh, the base uh, tool set in, uh, in ZBrush, like uh, the, the standard brush, masking brush, moving and, and transforming, but without actually Z modeling anything. So, um, and that's where this Z sphere comes in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, a, a word on the, on the process, uh, all, the, all the new, like um, hard surface process is, is still kind of relying heavily on the on the standard tool set that that has been around for ages, like the standard brush and uh, and the transpose and edge polish and stuff. So it's not necessarily new stuff. Um, so I'm gonna uh, I have this Z project file here with a, a lot of incremental versions of this, um, and I'm gonna go through a couple of them. I'm actually like the part that I wanted to demo, I'm going to actually skip ahead and, and just show that. So this is like, as a starting point, this would have been my, uh, my Z sphere here. And I, um, the thing I did was, uh, extracting like that visor there, um, using, using like a mask from the Z sphere and, uh, uh, dragging that out. And this is also just Dynamesh and I, uh, just mask sing things off here and uh, scale it up and down and so and, and keep redynamishing that. Um, and um, actually, let me let me skip ahead to the next version and and then I dragged out um, like extracted some geometry from the base sphere for. Um, for the head and this element in the back here. And I'm gonna skip forward 
to here. Hang on. Some scan. I'm gonna skip. You scoff so fast, Peter. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> so um, this is still uh, kind of the block hut. I'm I'm kind of looking for the file where I'm uh, where I started um, adding the the frame elements like uh, these guys here from the from the concept. Um, and I did those just by uh, extracting, actually extracting things from the from the visor here, like so, and then uh, accept, and then uh, and then I uh, just z remesh this, clean this up a little, z remesh, and that's uh, about the only time I use z remesh because I wanted. Um, to kind of do a PG crease on the on the edges here, and then, um, and then, uh, yeah, mer merge it together uh, as a as a dynamesh, and I'm going to show you. I hope this is the yeah, this is the kind of the the next step in this. So, essentially, what I did here was I extracted these um, these uh, frame bars from the from the base mesh. And um, these guys here on the sides, they're just a cube 3D. And um, it's got the, got the same bevel. And that's it's actually merged uh, into the, into the um, basic uh, main visor there. Sorry. And then these uh, recesses here, they're um, Boolean. And let me check if I still have the yeah, I still have the Boolean operands here. That's what they look, right? So, um, yeah, and um, that's basically uh, the, the block out, right? Um, just extracting stuff, scaling things up and down. A lot of edge polish along the way and a lot of planar brush to, to keep things clean and uh, smooth. And then for these details, I actually started building a uh, a brush that uh, a multi alpha brush that contains some of some of these basic geometry shapes here. Um, it is over here. It, it takes a minute to load because there is like uh, a whole series of of uh, brush tips in there. And by the way, if you um, if you wanna. Uh, learn more about that. Um, I found that uh, I found that um, multi alpha brush uh, uh, trick by um, by watching a YouTube video actually by by Michael Pavlovich. So if you Google for a ZBrush uh, multi alpha brush, you'll find his his video on that. Essentially, what you do is you um, you pre build these. Um, hang on, you can pre build. These uh, pieces of geometry here, uh, and uh, then import them into your scene. And uh, in the brush menu down here, you can uh, go add them to the brush, and it's behaving like a like an IMM brush. So you can get the same preview up here at the top of the screen for for all the stuff that's in there, or hit M for all all the brushes contents. So you can see. Um, my my little collection of base shapes. This is like rounded rounded elements and some rectangular stuff and triangles and some some uh, arrays of lines down here. Some stars and I can then go. I wonder why it's not. I wonder why it's only z uh, z subtracting right now. Which is weird, but. Yeah, that's weird, and I don't know why. But um, essentially, the all these... Elkeen is not pulling out. Oh, it's like uh, actually uh, subtracting for both. I... Hmm, that's strange. Hmm. I've had that happen before. I don't know what. Yeah, I, I would probably have to restart at this point. But I'll just uh, I'll just skip ahead. Um, yeah, and. But I think I think people get it though. You got the subtraction and added, like you know, the additive yeah. method. Yeah. So, 
this is actually an additive element here and these are added so yeah that's pretty weird actually and on the top piece i'll try try that nope okay that, that, that worked this afternoon though um if That's it's a stored brush, try resetting your brushes. <laughs> Maybe if uh, it's a brush that you have inside as a your Z brush, try resetting all brushes. Maybe you were yeah. playing with. Maybe I can re reset current brush. Maybe. Or... Sure, you can do that too. Yeah. And see. Maybe you were playing with something. That's really strange. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty oh, weird. That, that, that's interesting because okay. You just reset brushes. That's all you did, Paul. Because sometimes yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, just yeah. restart Z brushes. I'm like, I don't know what setting to switch. That's good to know. You might, actually have, had that you, might have been, you might have been playing with a setting you forgot or something like that. And it's caused. Yeah. I've definitely, I've definitely accidentally done that where my crap, yeah. where am I? What's weird is that it's now doing the same thing again. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, just to uh, go through some, some more increments of this. So, um, Basically, uh, a transition now from blocking out this visor element and this uh, this thing on the top here. By the way, this kind of uh, uh, cum element there sticking out that's also from the brush, so it works on rounded surfaces just fine. Uh, these cuts, like like Jason mentioned, this is ore brush, right? And these extrudes are just uh, manually masked and then dragged out. Uh, so yeah, the next. The next iteration takes a while to load. Something like this. And um, you can kind of see uh, on the back here where the, Ooh, cool. the, what the brush does. So it, it's, it's, um, it's a nice little uh, trick to, to kind of build up Greeble quite fast. It's not necessarily uh, good for, for making like um, really aimed uh bigger modeling choices but for for like small details like this it's very um, clean though i mean that's really clean that's what really matters yeah, yeah I, I do a lot of smoothing in between but it's still all kind of dynamish and it's not even like a very high res so this is um i don't know the, the scale also depends on the size of the model inside the scene but um this is uh 1400 so it's it's about half of what's of the maximum that is possible. Also, you can um, kind of see here in the wireframe that um, I've been using the the orc brush and also some of these base shapes um, with the sculptress mode on. So, if you ever run out of uh, resolution in, in Dynamesh and then uh, don't want to don't want to remesh, you can just uh, turn on uh, sculptress mode. That's cool. Oh, no, it's also like dependent on brush size, obviously. So if you have sculptures on, you want to go like for a really small brush size and then it'll just uh, just add in the necessary density there. So that works. Uh, that fortunately that works for the orc brush as well. That's really powerful for alphas because sometimes you don't have the resolution. It's just the sculptors thing kind of. Yeah. So up to this point, it kind of makes, um, yeah, it makes for a nice uh, alternative. Uh, obviously, this is only like an experimental thing. I, I'd still use polymodeling like in an actual uh, model, but um, you can uh, you can go a long way with just uh, Dynamesh. As, as for uh, as for bevels, this mm -hmm. uh, bevel here uh, in front, this is essentially the same technique that um, Marco Pluffet uh, mentioned um, using the clay brush. Uh, you can just um, I I hope the negative uh, I hope the negative clay now works as well. Um, I need to get something turned on then. Um, yeah, I have some some weird setting uh, somewhere. I don't know. Um, so essentially, what you can do is like uh, go around uh, edges, even harder edges than this, with the with a clay brush. 
a negative clay brush and then that way kind of create little little bevels there um and obviously you you, you want to kind of use age polish or something to to clean them to clean them up later and um a bit tricky to demo this stuff right now but yeah essentially um that's that's what i use to to make these bevels here and, and the bevels on the on the front of the eyes are so anyway um onto the onto the organic part and um yeah, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, actually um, detailing organic stuff and, and how to start when you have like a block out. This is, uh, this is all built from uh, Dynamesh and a lot of smoothing. And um, if you, if you uh, like, um, are puzzled as to where to start. Uh, it's, always, it's always a good idea to just uh, throw in some some alphas first. So I have a couple of them here, like at, at a really low value. Um, it doesn't even have to be like skin alphas. I'm just uh, at the very beginning, after some some basic noise here, um, and then I. I have some the happy little trees there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Popping out. Happy yeah. little trees there. Happy little trees there. These are actually um, uh, alpha brushes, uh, alphas that I found on Zipper Central like ages ago, like at least 15 years ago or so. And I'm still using them. Uh, I can't remember who posted them, though. It's just. Uh, been just dragging them along and uh is it in the repository like the uh brush thread that was going on mm, since forever i'm not i'm not sure i should have googled for them they're they're called next dipple and uh well there's a one for alvarez lots did of, lots years of ago them. and then there's actual repository of alphas on pixel logic's website let me let me actually look that up um, so it might be those like a little bit like Alex's. Um, next to pull ZBrush. Find out. So while he's doing that, um, um, Jason, there was a question about what you guys are looking for hiring. Is there anything in particular you guys are looking in portfolio wise? That's a good question. Um, so it's a little tricky. You got to do it all here. Um, you can't just be a creature guy or, you know, you got to be able to model hard surface. And it, it, you don't have to be top notch either, you know, um, but like we'll get you there. I, I want it. To, Look, it doesn't mean I want to hire you. Like, it, I'm down to teaching some things. It just depends on the portfolio and whatnot. But if you want to be specific, hard surface, organic um, uh, creatures uh, it, are important. That's what we do. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, my general advice to anybody is don't stay in one lane too long. Um, it, I mean, you can. I mean, there's definitely people that specialize. There's no harm or foul to each their own. Uh, but we, but our care, the, the more robust you are here, the, the, the more I can plug you into the pipeline as opposed to being specific. Um, so it's I, like it, hard service is just as equally as much as is, is creature stuff. I think today we're we're gonna focus a lot on um, the hard surface stuff because that's what impacted Eternal so much. But um, uh, I'm glad Peter's doing some organic stuff because you know that's the, the we have yeah uh, uh, about before. that. Uh, I think I think uh, this uh, this weird. Uh, Z add Z sub thing is still going on. Like I can't. Can you? I don't think it, it, it wouldn't take that long to just if you want to just reboot. Just yes, I it think might it just uh, it might be or restart rather. Not. I can either re yeah. restart or go through the other. Uh, yeah, things. restart. It might be your tablet or your Cintiq too. Maybe something's going on where it's reading. That's the, weird. Uh, because I, yeah. Okay. Let me just. Um, another question keeps popping up about uh, like how long you get. Sorry, <laughs> how long you guys spend on each character? Oh, that's a really good one. It, it, so.
So uh, it varies. Um, I'd say, it's obviously, if you have something like the imp, it's a single manifold character, which is not very complex. I mean, not, it's all one mesh, but for the most part, it's organic. It's faster. Generally, uh, it depends. It depends on the feedback loop because we spend – Doom characters are iconic, so it's not like you get a concept and it's done. Um, so there's a lot of feedback loop going back and forth on that. Um, it's generally two months. Uh, if it's an organic character without hard surface, it's probably half of that. Um, uh, that's for high poly work. The whole like generally, it's a month for high poly. Uh, for if it's or, if it has hard surface, it's two months. If it's a hero character like Denton the Doom Marine, it's going to go longer than that because we're going to be real critical of it. Um, and it's it's tough. I mean, the, these these chess pieces are important, so we spend time on them. Uh, so it kind of varies. Uh, the feedback it really depends on the feedback loop. Um, so in general, I'm, I'm giving you a very rough ballpark because it's hard to pin that down because it could be a boss might go into two or three months time frame depending on on all that. But it's generally the, if it's a single medical character, I use the imp for example. Do Eternal what's about a month of high poly work, probably a, a week to low, uh, a little a little week depends, um, and then uh, uh, a week to texture. Two sometimes it's two weeks. Cool. So. Um let me see if this works now. Yeah, I think they found the alphas that you were getting from there from Monster Maker, aka Rick Baker. Oh, Monster Maker, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that guy, he's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they put a link in the chat. I think just like a, a hero to everybody that knows anything about it. So it's amazing. So, yeah, um, this is essentially my, my base uh, skin pass before any any other detailing. I'm just uh, laying down some bass noise, like you saw, uh, with the alphas, and then ex essentially going over the entire model with a with a damn standard pass. Um, and this this I keep doing for for a while, right? This is not so much uh, about finding uh, final detail, but but rather um, finding some some basic uh, directionality. That wasn't a good one. Um, and then in the next step, I would then go in and um, with a with a standard brush or uh, with with a clay brush, um, and like zoom in. This is a kind of a small a small scale process there, but I go in and kind of start uh, from adding some volumes and, and trying to find some interesting things that are going on. Um, adding some volumes, also combining some some of these wrinkles into larger pockets, and then gradually kind of working working my way up. So it's not actually like a linear process going from necessarily going from uh, large blocks to small, but it's um, in in this case in the in the detailing of monster skin at least uh, it's it's. Um, you often got the case that like smaller, smaller details and, and smaller flow informs informs the secondary details, and so it can kind of start bringing out um, more so decisive for, forms. Sorry, sorry. What do you guys do for references? Since you guys are creating stuff that just doesn't exist in real life, right? So. Mm -hmm. uh, someone was asking, well, "What do you guys use for reference for all this?" Uh, we one thing that one tool that a lot of artists are not aware of, but we well, first off, we use a program called Pure Ref, which is amazing for image boards. So um, I'll do I'll do a breakdown from a, from a top down view, but I'm sure each artist is different. Um, usually, what I'll do is I'll do the Pure Ref, drop a uh, drop the concept in that we have, and then I just litter it with Pinterest stuff from Pinterest, like uh, I, any I, we reference. Doom is basically 80s horror, uh, like Evil Dead stuff. Um, it's old effects are always like awesome callbacks to kind of like our style. Um, we look at some pretty gross things. <laughs> Nature, of, it's, it's weird. There's five spices with some of us on PTSD from it. Um, but basically, references everything. You have to have it. We don't go into blind. There's a and the, if the, the, the image boards or uh, something we just totally use. Um, it looks like Dan's grabbing his um, head. I also have in the background these uh, uh, real life skulls. Uh, not real life. So I mean, yeah, real dead people's skulls. You know, <laughs> um, a re replica of uh, skulls, stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 this guy right here, man, is huge. 
you, you, you should, I use that thing all the time. You never master anatomy. I don't care how. I mean, it's like a lifelong thing. It's a journey. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. So uh, sometime later, I just skip to the next uh, to the next version of this. Sometime later, you have probably have something like this, and awesome. um, yeah, this I think this was a point where I saved this and and um, put this aside for two days, uh, which always helps in kind of. Uh, having uh, having an opinion on on like a small small scale detail like this. So coming back, I thought this was all still a little too uniform. And um, yeah, a change from this base loop, like uh, uh, um, damn standard brush for wrinkles and then filling them up, was in order. So the next step would then I think be uh, with the polish and, and clay brushes to go in and, and beat down some of the, you can kind of see it here in the in the side of the cheeks, beat down some of the uh, uniform detail and start um, start trying to find some areas of rest. Also along the transition here uh, to the to the hard surface thing. Um, and from there, I think, yeah, this is this is uh, polished down even further. So essentially, what you can do at this point, because you, you don't want to necessarily don't want to lose all the all the base noise that is still shining through. So you cannot just smooth this out. So um, you can actually try and um, try and uh, polish things using the standard brush, like ever so carefully filling in things until. So it's only like the larger shapes remaining, or you can like the next, uh, the next st stronger brush, I would say is, is the clay brush that it kind of um, smooths out the things, but depending on how hard you press, it doesn't lose all the underlying detail. It's just very subtle. Um, and of course, polish, which is uh, like, It's a nice way to kind of flatten everything. Um, again, not not as strong as like uh, edge polish would be on a hard surface model, but yeah. And that way you go like um, can go through your model and create areas of rest. And um, I think there was a question before uh, how much how much detail we put in the sculpts versus uh, how. Um, how much we um, do in the texture, and that's uh, that's a pretty pretty important thing um, to ask yourself uh, in a, in a game that is uh, that is uh, gonna ship on a couple of platforms. So I wouldn't necessarily go in and, and do all the like the atomic detail in the sculpt because um, you still want to retain a little bit of of control over the of the resolution of the like the third read pore detail and whatnot um, in substance or wherever you texture this stuff. Later, and I can skip ahead. There's some more work on the on the wounds and stuff. And um, yeah, lastly, Lastly, this is the last detailing step. I decided this was all still too uniform. So this this step, um, I started to make some uh, more bold uh, kind of incisions with, uh, I think this is also orb, orb curve tool. And then you can, uh, let me try that. Uh, like make, make a really bold cut here and then go in with a, with a standard brush and then kind of try to add some context around the sides of the of the incision and kind of make it a bit more organic looking and start repairing things. So for Doom, there's a lot of transitioning from organic to hard surface yeah. in guys' pieces. Someone was asking, um, Ara was asking, how do you guys manage fusing from non-organic to organic surfaces? 
Is there anything you guys do specifically, or you're just pretty much, I see some hard surface and you'll make some adjustments in organic to reflect the things that are um, colliding. Yeah, obviously you wanna, you wanna like, uh, you know, make your sculpt appear as, as though it kind of interacts with the with the hard surface you can kind of um you know add little bumps in the in the sculpt and and um kind of suggest that the the hard surface element is uh continuing underneath the skin you can kind of uh see that's going on here or in the back here so that's that's kind of how you uh how you create the context between the two and then obviously in the texture later on you can you can cover it up in, in a bit of gore and and uh, have blood on either side of the transition so th there's uh, blood on the on the tech bit and on the skin it kind of makes a nice uh transition as well yeah it's just putting out stuff in his sub tools like flesh that that was always generally a good thing um it's just easier to split things out usually like you get that nice transition at hard edge as opposed to like if you had to just it's just a pain in the butt you know to to, to manage hard surface if it's also turning into flesh like split it out where you can so yeah um this is uh i think the um the organic part is actually now um a bit more polished than the than the uh, hard surface stuff so i'll probably go back in with the hard surface and, and add some more add some more detail to this later and it's funny that i can't select this guy now but yeah some something's weird with my zebra today sorry folks <laughs> it, it was it was all good in the afternoon now it's behaving great and how, and always some, Sorry, something always that. something always goes wrong. It's, uh, yeah. it's the I, curse of making a demo. I don't understand, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that, that's all I have. Um, yeah. anyway. It could be live bullying, maybe, or no, you don't have live bullions on. No, no, it's weird. All right, well, that believe it or not has been an hour and a half actually. Wow. So you nailed it perfectly, right at the right. There time. you go. There you go. Oh. That's so, crazy. Do you have any more questions? Good. Any questions before we uh, move on and uh, do some giveaways and then presentation from Pixel Logic? So you're not going to want to go anywhere because who knows whatever I say, and that's pretty much the whole day, but especially for this upcoming demonstration. You never know what I'm going to say. <laughs> so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And then, yes, we are going to do giveaways again after this. And I think I'm going to save a couple to give away after I also go for uh, our part of the Pixelogic presentations today. Um, on the one question that didn't came through, Jason was, are you guys also looking to hire our environment artists? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. everything. Uh, don't, don't try away. Even uh, keep in mind, like I, I, I know that po I'm always familiar with our characters posting. Um, if, if they're if they're if they aren't live right now, they get in positions. A lot of things are tied to uh, uh, the, the new project starting. But they will be coming. Like we are definitely looking. So if it's not there, just hold tight and check every couple of days or something. Because I'm sure they'll pop up. Um, because uh, the positions are opening up in, in, in all the way to the end of this year and are going to the next. Uh, I think believe on all art. I'm not sure how many or whatnot. I can speak for us, but we're looking for a couple. Yeah. Any concept roles? So yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 traditional concept artists um, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're send it over. We're definitely looking for some of those guys too. Nice. Well, guys, this was great. Really appreciate it. And uh, I think showing what you guys are doing too maybe helps some people seeing the techniques that are also hard surface and how you guys intertwine the organic with the hard surface and within your games as well. Doom's iconic. So uh, seeing those characters come to life. How do you guys? That's a good question that came back too. Uh, what do you guys to keep reimagining these characters? What what's what, What's the process there? Because you keep um, making characters that are old, and you keep revamping them and making them even cooler. Uh, that's uh, really interesting. Um, well, it, it, uh, they are iconic, and each version of Doom is kind of different. Like Eternal was a throwback to original '93 Doom, um, and it's got a little bit of camp to it, a little bit of Evil Dead. Um, 2016 was a kind of a mix. We went full board Nintendo blood gore, kind of like campy, um, but we want to walk the line. We don't go too campy, blah blah. blah. So, ne I mean, obviously, I can't say anything about the next project. Um, but in the beginning, uh, for Doom Eternal, it was like, we're going to throw back, go way back. We're going to go back to the original for inspiration. You can see that across the board. All the characters are 
very much 93 Doom updated, which was awesome. Um, um, and I look forward to whatever we do next, which will be a while, but you know, whenever it's time to share, I look forward to doing such. Um, but yeah, the, the Eternal specifically was a big nod to 93 Doom. Yeah, I remember that game as a kid. I definitely remember <laughs> playing some Doom. Same. same. Yeah. yeah. My, my my friend's dad's Pentium Gateway at his kitchen <laughs> business, hiding from him because there's yep. pentagrams on the wall. Yeah, I had a 480. I think I had a 486. Is what <laughs> I, had, I, I remember that. Packard Bell. Eight, yeah, 80 meg hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly oh, turned his color to yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the days, man. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> Ah, uh, the kids, they know nothing about this now. Yeah. <laughs> shareware, does that mean anything to you? <laughs> that's shareware, that's right, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much again for taking time out of your Sunday. I really appreciate that, especially everyone's got families and stuff. And for you guys to take some time away to spend with us, really, really appreciate it. Um, you, people were loving it because your chat was just rolling. Like it was on oh, like, yeah. a wheel going down the hill. People were just uh, already commenting and making a lot of questions and throwing things up. So really appreciate you guys taking the time to do this. Especially well, Peter's late for you. And yeah. Denzel, it's more morning time-ish now in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, and I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having us. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having us. And yeah, it's great. 100%, man. Like, I really appreciate it. You know, thank you so much. Yeah, hopefully you guys get some people those, again, looking for a job. Yeah, Jason's throwing it out there for throwing the gamut out. Who wants to work here, right? So, right, exactly. Yeah, get it up there. All right. Well, thanks, guys. We're gonna move on to giveaways and to the Pixelogic presentation. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. thanks for Bye. tuning in.